You're back, and earlier than ever, just in time for the daily special. I find this story to be funny. How do you like your humor? I prefer my humor, like my coffee, dark. I'll tell you this secret on behalf of Herman. It takes place in the most popular cafe in town, Wicked Brew. So top off your glass, sit down, and listen to this. The early bird special is on. This usually brings out the more alert senior citizens of the town, like Herman. He drives his scooter with a large sign mounted to the back that reads, Stop, I'm old. He puts the motorized scooter to its highest setting to get to his location as fast as possible. His favorite place for breakfast. He walks up to the doors of Wicked Brew. Herman enters with a hunch in his posture. His back is sore. Herman locks his eyes on the most prized booth in the cafe. Luckily for him, Agnes isn't there. It's fortunate that he's the first person to arrive. Herman shuffles himself to the booth and dramatically sits himself down. Well, it appears the early bird gets the morning special. Could this be my lucky day? He sits right in the middle of Agnes's special booth. The booth faces the front offering an excellent view of the menu. It is close to the door, so you can get in and out with ease, but far enough to not get overcrowded. This is the prime spot for sharing your gossip. Normally, Herman doesn't get to share his rumors. Ah, it's sure nice to sit here for once. He's usually late and stuck sitting in the corner, muttering to whomever else is exiled there. In extreme and frequent cases, he often talks to himself, while all the others get to discuss the happenings of the town. These important discussions were often about things like whose grandchildren had gotten more awards and social acknowledgements. The most important things to talk about were actually any dirty secrets others had. A popular one being who left who for whom. Whichever topic was picked led to backhanded comments, and in some cases, the bluntest of mockery. I'm sure glad the usual crowd is running a little late this morning. He sits and looks around the empty booth he alone occupies. Agnes usually has this spot I do now. Usually she's moaning about something by now. Oh, what would it be this time? Herman recounts recent gossip, helmed by Agnes, of course. A scandalous exploration into someone's daughter who, supposedly, is battling a long history of drug use. No one seemed to pay any mind to it, though. Oh yeah! The Abbott girl! Last I heard, she was a real mess, I think. Not sure. Didn't really listen. How could I be bothered to listen when that bag Agnes opens her trap? Frequently, Agnes and her friends would also berate and insult people sitting around the cafe. These people were of lower standing and definitely treated as such. It should come as no surprise that Herman is one of these people, but that changes today, because he sits in Agnes's spot. Herman checks his old watch. It's broken and a little slow. No one's here yet. I'll have to wait some more before I can share my stories. But by golly, do I have something to say today? A waitress, a woman named Julie, arrives and stares at Herman. What are you doing sitting here? I guess I just had a bit more luck this morning. He smiles at her with his slightly crooked teeth. Okay, well here's the menu. Herman takes the paper menu and the waitress walks away. Before out of view, she takes a look back at him suspiciously. He looks at what today's special is. Herman looks around. There is still no one in sight. He looks at their clock only a little ahead of his watch. That definitely means that someone should be here soon. Wicked Brew is really quite the hot spot from morning till noon. Now there's no reason it should be this quiet. At this rate, no one will hear my stories. At this rate, I'll be talking to the wall. Herman decides he should still talk about something. He can always catch people back up to speed as they roll in. Well, you know that old bag Agnes? I got some news about her today. You see, she's not here. That's because I played a little prank on her yesterday. 
Herman beams with pride, closes his eyes and wears a stupid grin on his face. He elbows the air beside himself, as if to get its attention. Nothing serious, but something she had coming. Safe to say she won't be in today. What did you say about Agnes? Bad nothing. Why is it even a concern? She's my mother. Now what the heck did you do to her? <laughs> what did you do? Something she never saw coming. Ah, oh, I got her good. Tell me now. I changed her alarm. She won't be up for another half an hour at least. The waitress rolls her eyes. You broke into her house just to tamper with her alarm? You're such a moron. It's funny because she'll be late for breakfast. Oh, I get it. Very funny. Now, just order so you can get out of here. He looks at the menu. Julie rolls her eyes as her foot twitches with eagerness to step away from Herman. I'll have the early bird special. Senior citizen's discount. She stares at him blankly. You don't say. She doesn't even bother writing it down. What to drink? I'll start with water. Julie starts to leave. Nah, make it a coffee. She walks back to relay the order. Now, with Agnes gone, I knew I would be able to talk uninterrupted. She's a real chatterbox. But I knew that that old bitty Betsy would be a stubborn thorn in my side. So, she would also have to be unavailable this morning. An elderly lady by the name of Gertrude enters the coffee shop. Fortunate for her, it's only a short walk away. She looks around as if she doesn't recognize the place. Is this Wicked Brew? Yes, it is. Pardon me. You're in the right spot, Gertrude. Then why is it so empty? Come over here and I'll tell you. That's not my seat. It's a better seat. But I want my seat. Gertrude walks her way down to the spot she usually sits. Herman waves her away. Ah, then have it, you old biddy. She looks at Herman and wonders what he's doing out of his spot. Why don't you come sit over here? Plenty of room. I could be dead in a week. Might as well live a little. She holds her hand to her ear. What was that? Could be dead in a week. I should enjoy it. A week? Don't flatter yourself. Herman looks away from her and stares side to side in the vacant booth. So I traveled to her place last night and I went into her room with a screwdriver. The waitress rushes and places the coffee mug down hard onto the table. It shakes, sending coffee side to side like a shallow, jittery geyser. Julie's disappointed when none of it scalds Herman. Herman has neither the focus nor care and continues his rambles. Where was I? I broke in. Ah, right. I walk in the door and I see her sleeping there. Herman lifts his hand and pretends he's holding a sharp tool. That's right. I went over there with a screwdriver. She's vulnerable, so I could get away with anything. So I did. He picks up his mug and takes a sip of the dark liquid. A rush of bitter energy surges through him, a refreshing replenish after the events that transpired moments earlier. Then that's when I jammed the screwdriver right into her walker and took it apart at the joints. I'd like to see how far she can get without it. God willing, her life calls running as late as Agnes is. He can practically picture the entire scene and chuckles to himself again. <laughs> Here's the real scoop on her though. He pauses and looks over to Gertrude. Do you want to hear some dirt on Betsy? Gertrude doesn't respond. Gertrude, I've got news for you. Well, if you've got the flu, it's a good thing I'm all the way over here. Herman touches his chin in thought as an excellent idea forms in his head. Gertrude, I've always thought you were just dumb and ugly. Well, isn't that swell? 
Herman laughs loudly to himself and slaps his knee. Gertrude starts to fiddle with her hearing aid. Now, what's so funny? I'll tell you later. Herman turns away from her and continues his lash towards Betsy. The truth about her? You wouldn't know unless you broke into her house. She's a hoarder. Gosh, and I thought I held on to useless crap. He gulps down half his coffee. Before he drinks more, the waitress is already there to top up the glass. This time, she surely spills it on him. Herman gets up and rubs his pants. Oh, 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 that's very hot. Herman relaxes and stretches his sore back. Oh no, the booth! Herman leaps back into the booth he worked so hard to get. He lands his bottom right in the center. Herman recalls the events of the late night and early morning as he obnoxiously slurps the overflowing mug. After that, I drove over towards Nolan's home next. Funny thing is though, I got bit by the dismantling bug and I saw the stop sign. I figured, why not just do it while I'm out? Should be funny, right? Herman takes another sip from his mug. Mounted it to the back of my scooter. Looks good. Of course I had to improve it. Scribbled, I'm old, on it. He puts his tail on the shelf while he looks around. The waitress tries to take Gertrude's order. Well, I don't know. I always get the sandwich. What's good to try? Gertrude flaps the menu several times. Is the soup spicy? It's a little spicy. Is that too spicy? How would I know? You work here, don't you? How's the chili? The chili isn't available during breakfast. Plus, it's spicier than the soup. Well, I think I can handle the heat. Herman can't believe what he hears. That will burn your mouth! I just said you can't order the chili. Neither of you can tell me what I can and can't do. Now give me the chili. Did you even listen to what I said? You know what? Forget it. I'll bring you your sandwich. You'll probably forget what you would have ordered by the time I bring it back anyway. Well, I hope you don't expect a tip after that. <gasps> Whatever will I do? Julie leaves to relay the information to the cook. Herman looks down to his mug, a simple white mug that contains the words Wicked Brew across it. He drinks the remaining contents from it. Come to think of it, isn't that the same crosswalk where that young man got hit by the car? Nah, that's impossible. I arrived at Nolan's place early in the morning. I had to get rid of him. You see, back when we hung out together, we'd tell each other jokes. But now he just sits in the booth and gets all the laughter and attention from my gags. Well, I think this time he's made the final joke. You see, I've been to his place. I know where he keeps his pills. So I went to his medicine cabinet and shuffled the days around. I'm pretty sure I know what each one does. As far as I know, he won't be in today. He might be better next week though. Herman looks around to see that there's still no other people entering. Strange that no one's around today. He returns to his story. Yes, sir. He'll be having a bad morning. Oh yeah, his blood's gonna be as thinned out as his hair. Herman laughs to himself, proud of his accomplishments. He looks around, the place almost as vacant as when he entered. Where is everybody? They're not here to listen to my stories. Even the abbots aren't here. I've heard they always stop by their daughter's place on the way to Wicked Brew to check on her each morning. But they should be here by now. Julie rushes by and dumps off his food without even looking at him. The arrangement of bacon, pancakes, and eggs was seasonally festive for October. Herman scarfs down the breakfast like a starving animal. He takes out his wallet and leaves his money on the table. Herman sits up from the seat cushion, now molded to fit himself. He leaves the spot he treasures so much, distracted by the surprisingly odd serenity of the scene. Herman walks around the place. Each table is empty, 
with the exception of Gertrude and her sandwich. Herman leaves and hops on his motorized scooter. He travels on the sidewalk and sees the roads have barricades with a single officer patrolling the area. Herman sees that the traffic is backed up. People make attempts to both look at the commotion and bypass it. Now, that right there is a real commotion! The situation people stare at is a corpse, scattered along the bloody road. This is definitely something people will discuss during their morning coffee, when they can get to it that is. Herman looks closely and notices at the intersection of the accident, there is a missing stop sign. Haha, <laughs> well isn't that something? Herman reverses his scooter, turns it around and races off. He keeps to the sidewalks and veers away from the commotion. Herman speeds away from the scene as fast as possible. He's for once glad that not a single person listened to his story. Herman sure is a trickster. He does need to learn when to stop. Oh that Herman. I suspect he'll be back to his regular table by tomorrow. That old fool tells his secrets for free to anyone that will actually listen to him. You'll never meet a character quite like Herman. Watch out for him when he's out on his scooter. Never know what that trickster will be up to. I wouldn't be surprised to see him on a mugshot when this secret gets out.